Hi everyone, Renee here, and today's video is one of the most highly requested brand reviews. Today we're talking all about Paula's Choice. I have partnered with them for this video to help you navigate through the vast range of product available and also to share with you some of my personal favorites. So if you're confused like I have been about where to start, which of the 10 BHAs, 5 AHAs, 6 cleansers that you need or that will work best for you, then hopefully this will help. So for those of you who are not familiar, Paula's Choice was the pioneer in honest beauty. They were all about the no-nonsense, no-frills, of effective, concentrated formulas that were ingredient focused, something that has become really popular today. They were also one of the original direct-to-consumer beauty brands. Paula Begown herself literally wrote the book, creating awareness around ingredients and formulations, what to look for, what to avoid, and why. And as far as skincare brands go, this one for me is one that is just worry-free. The challenge really is in finding the products that suit your skin condition the most. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate you first through the different sub-brands within Paula's Choice, and then I'm going to be sharing with you some of my personal favorite picks from each category. I think of these sub-brands as great guidelines. I actually have favorites in almost every single one of these brands, so um, we got a lot to go through. Calm is your entry level routine. Sort of baseline, good products, great formulations, non offensive ingredients, great for skin that doesn't have any major concerns, but you're still very fussy about your skincare. Anyone looking for a good starting point, this is what I would recommend. It's great for teenagers. It's great for men who are still using the same soap they use on their body, on their face. These products really are for everyone, including those with really sensitive skin. For those who have more needs in their skin condition, whether they're a little dry or maybe oily, then the skin recovery line is for drier skin skin types and skin that may be just more depleted, needs a lot more nourishment, um, more antioxidants. Skin balancing is for normal to oilier skin types. So this addresses more oil control, but also pore, pore issues, stuff like that. The Resist line is very much specifically focused on age defensiveness. The products in the dark blue packaging is geared more towards those with a normal to dry skin condition. And the light blue packaging is for normal to oily skin conditions. So if you're concerned with the signs of aging, whether it's hyperpigmentation, whether it's lines, whether it's looser skin um, or loss of firmness, then Resist is where you can go. So the clinical line of products is not really a sub-brand. These are more intensive add-ons to your routine. These target and focus on very specific and more complex skin concerns. So anything that just needs more attention. Defense is a great line that's really relevant today because it's all about defending against environmental pollutants and stressors. These days it's not just about UV rays, it's about fine dust, it's about smog um, and all the toxins and the pollutants that surround us. All these things are believed to compromise and weaken our skin barrier, cause aging, pigmentation. So this line is all about the antioxidants. It's full of superfoods and also the ceramides, anything that sort of builds our skin's defenses. Earth Source was a really pleasant surprise for me because I just never, even though I always associate Paula's Choice with being clean, green was just not, not expected. But also they done it really well. These formulas are up to 98% natural. Clear is all about acne and just shutting down that cycle. It addresses all the associated issues such as unclogging pores, dealing with inflammation, with redness, dryness, and the dehydration. By the way, the packaging of every product will have an indication of the skin condition that the product might be more suited for. Starting off as usual with cleansers. I'm actually a little obsessed with them. These are all second step evening cleansers, or if you cleanse in the morning, these are great for morning cleanse. Optimal results, hydrating cleanser. You saw this in my last routine. This is exactly the kind of second cleanser that I absolutely love. It's soothing, it's calming, it's hydrating, and it's effective. It's got this beautiful sort of creamy gel texture, and it's actually a very luxurious sort of nice thick texture. So you really, I love applying this on my skin. It also rinses off completely clean. This is great as a second cleanser, but this is also really good when I've used it as a first cleanser as well. You can just use it twice and it leaves your skin feeling just hydrated, plump, and just really nice. The Resist Perfectly Balanced Foaming Cleanser. I'm kind of obsessed with this because I've never really, it's so unique. I've never really tried um, a cleanser like this. And it's what I'm using now that it's summer and there's a lot of congestion 
digestion going on. This gives me a little more of a cleanse, but it's still really gentle. This is also a cream. It's like a cream cleanser that actually foams a little bit. This uses natural cleansing agents that are really, really gentle. This contains an extra dose of skin nourishers like ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids. It also has soothing ingredients. This has definitely become one of my favorites. So if you like emulsifying gel cleansers or milky jelly cleansers, the Defense Hydrating Gel to Cream Cleanser. Just another really soothing, calming cleanser that just does its job. This will get rid of all the pollutants and the dust and grime that is accumulated on your skin at the end of the day. Again, this uses very natural and gentle cleansing agents and it rinses off without any greasy residue whatsoever. The pore reducing toner from the Skin Balancing line is so good. It is super, super lightweight. It's not heavy at all. This is the kind of toner that you could actually layer. It will never get sticky on your skin, but it will really hydrate it. For the hot, humid climates or anyone with normal to oily skin who prefers a more lightweight hydrating toner, this is such a great one. The fourth ingredient is niacinamide, which is great for, you know, balancing your skin out for oil control. It's also great for the appearance of pores pores, as well as a whole number of other things. This also has the trinity of the cholesterol, ceramides, and lipids that ensure that your skin is fully hydrated throughout, not just um, superficially. This also contains a powerful vitamin C derivatives, THD, as well as all the hydrators, B5, sodium PCA. It's got some soothing agents as well. So the earth-sourced purely natural refreshing toner was a surprise to me because this is exactly the kind of Korean type toner that I really love. Uh, first of all, it's got this wonderfully viscous texture, which is so hydrating. It's also got this beautiful cloudiness. Um, this, I would say, is medium weight hydration if the pore reducing toner is very lightweight. But this is also just jam packed with beautiful plant botanical natural goodness. It's got green tea, chamomile, oats, pomegranate, all these really antioxidant rich ingredients as well as um, the hydrators, um, vitamin E. It's just really, it leaves my skin feeling so plumped out. If I use multiple skins of this, my skin is literally glowing and plumped out. They resist advanced replenishing toner. So this is the heaviest of the lot. In fact, this I would even consider to be a liquid moisturizer, which is actually very on trend. This is a milky emulsion. Right now for me, I'm in 99% humidity. I don't actually need an extra moisturizer under my sunscreen. So this has actually been really perfect. So if there's any other sort of lightweight serums that I'm using, I would use those first. You can definitely feel it holding hydration in your skin, but it leaves the surface feeling really smoothed out and soft. This has some really nice lipids in it. It's got the omega plant oils in it, as well as some antioxidants. It's really hydrating. Um, this is fantastic for if you have dry skin, but it's also great as a moisturizer if you have oilier skin. The 2% BHA exfoliating liquid is the unicorn of the brand. This is a skincare icon. This is the first product I bought from Paula's Choice. I don't even know how many years ago. And I remember thinking that I didn't expect it would be great for my skin. I always have this opinion of BHA um, products just being really, really drying, sort of irritating because at that time, pretty much all BHA products I've ever used um, also contained a lot of alcohol in them as well. It is so hydrating. I was not prepared for how hydrating this is. It's the kind of heavily hydrating where moisturizer is optional. This is effective in so many ways. It's great at decongesting the pores. It also offers some light exfoliation, but also um, this actually works on hyperpigmentation quite effectively as well. It does all of these things without any irritation, any inflammation, obviously. Um, salicylic acid has analgesic properties to it, so it's great at calming um, inflammation down. It's great for acne. There's a reason for the heaviness to this. Um, it can be quite sticky, especially if you're living in a very humid climate or um, if you have just very oily skin, to get really technical with you, it comes from high levels of glycogen 
glycol, which acts as a penetration enhancer for the salicylic acid. So it will work more effectively and quicker because it is getting past the surface layers of the skin. Glycol is also a water binding agent, which is why, you know, you've got that sort of really humectant kind of heaviness. You know, I personally kind of love a little bit of stickiness, um, but if that's just too much for you, then there is this one. Clear's Anti-Redness Exfoliating Solution Regular Strength. This is a watery weightless texture. It's also 2% BHA. And even though it does do the same thing, it will do it a little slower because it doesn't have the glycol in it. So it doesn't have that penetration enhancer um, that ensures like really quick, quick results. So this was really interesting to me. Resist BHA 9%. I have never seen a 9% BHA before. This was very carefully formulated to be a controlled release. So it's not just like all at once on this area in your face. This is a leave-on spot treatment. It's not something you would apply all over your face, but something you just apply to those really, really stubborn spots. I've had this really hard sort of like black comedone on my forehead for, I don't even, I don't even know how many years now. I used this and very quickly it kind of just dissolved and flattened out. If you have those like really stubborn, like clogged pores or hard bumps on your skin, um, whiteheads, or things just won't go away and nothing seems to be working, this will help with that. This is a new favorite in my routine. It's from Resist, their advanced smoothing treatment, 10% AHA. This is a 10% AHA combo of glycolic, lactic, malic, tartaric, and salicylic acid as well. That really did not cause me any kind of tingling, irritation, redness, but at the same time, it really works. I would um, use this maybe once or twice a week, but I could actually use this every other day. It just makes my skin so soft and glassy. Um, what I love is also just the serum on its own, like forget about the actives, is beautiful in itself. The texture is just right. It's lightweight, but it's still really hydrating, so I feel like it plumps out the skin. I use this after hydrating toner or essence and before moisturizer about two times a week. Earth Source Powerberry Serum is just this beautiful pink serum. It's 95% natural ingredients. The color comes from 15 very carefully selected berries for their proven antioxidant potency. They have a high ORAC value. Learning new things, the ORAC value measures how well an ingredient protects the body from free radical damage. Honestly, I just love the milky texture of it. It is so hydrating. It makes my skin feel plump and it gives my skin just this beautiful glow. A great daytime serum which will really boost the defense of your other products, whether it be a vitamin C serum or sunscreen. Defense's antioxidant pore purifier is very, very humble. It's actually jam-packed with fantastic actives that pretty much do everything. This is the standout in the defense line for me. I feel like it really works to treat and protect your skin from all different um, angles. It has a really wonderful grouping of actives. It's got 0.5% BHA, salicylic acid, azelaic acid to fight off inflammation sensitivity. It's anti-redness. There's also niacinamide to amp up the anti-inflammation for brightening, just, just for everything. And of course, a bunch of antioxidants, including CoQ10, vitamin C derivatives, green tea, some soothing agents like um, Centella Asiatica. It's also got red ginseng, which is one of my favorite ingredients. There's ceramides in here. I mean, you know, it's got it all. Um, it has a lightweight consistency that really is sort of hydration binding. It's very hydrating. It actually just feels really nice in the skin. It does sink in and disappear. Really a great serum for the summer if you have normal to oily skin or you just have dull skin or you just want defense. The Calm Repairing Serum, in my opinion, is about as good as it gets if you just really want that soothing sort of barrier repair, um, hydrating serum. It's got some body to it and it's really hydrating though not sticky at all. Um, it's simple in the best possible way. It's got the trinity of ceramides, cholesterol, and lipids for barrier reinforcement and full hydration. There's beta-glucan, CoQ10. It just, just really feels nice on the skin. The heaviest of all the serums that I really recommend is the Omega Plus Complex. This is sort of like a fatty serum. It's like an emulsion, but it's still lightweight and hydrating. Um, 
This is fantastic during the winter months. It's also great as a lightweight moisturizer. I feel like if you're someone who does not like oils, you don't like oil serums, you don't like the way it feels, then this is a fantastic replacement because I will either use this or I will use an oil serum. I don't always use them together unless I'm using this purely as a moisturizer. It has the ceramides, it's got the antioxidants, it's just really nourishing on your skin. Um, my only thing with this, the only reason why this did not make it into my 2017 favorites is because of the way it smells. I mean, it's there's no added fragrance or anything like that, and and it's obvious. So these are the more concentrated hero ingredient serums, and they're formulated in a way to mix really well with other products. So you can give a boost to your other serums or your moisturizer. These are superstars in my opinion. They are hero ingredient, but they are very complete formulas with additional ingredients and technology to really boost its performance. Their 10% niacinamide happens to be one of my favorite all-time serums. This is just so well formulated. I mean, 10% niacinamide is no small amount. And out of all the ones that I've tried, this is definitely the most elegant and the most well-formulated one. Um, the other ones that I've tried, either there's textural um, issues, it pills, or it's just too strong in the sense that um, it will cause dryness, um, some a little bit of irritation around certain areas, but certainly a lot of dryness. Um, I don't get that with this at all. All. This ingredient is so multitasking. It's pretty much great for any issue that you can possibly have. It's a great age defensive ingredient. Um, it's a great um, brightening ingredient. It's great for hyperpigmentation. It's great for dialing down inflammation. And I've said this many times on my retinol journey. This made all the difference in the world in terms of how badly um, my skin was affected by side effects. In fact, I really didn't even experience that much sort of sensitivity um, and redness this time around. If you have issues with enlarged pores, this will really help with the appearance of it. Um, if you have really oily skin, this helps balance things out. It's great for the summer months as well. This is really sort of a lightweight formula, but it's very hydrating, which is why I tend to use this right after cleansing. This is full of antioxidants, the hydrators, skin soothers, sinks right in, elegant formula, don't want to be without it. C15 Super Booster, I reviewed this in my vitamin C video as just a really, really solid dupe for the SkinCeuticals gold standard. It's got the 15% L-ascorbic acid as well as vitamin E and ferulic acid to help stabilize it and just to boost the antioxidant properties. I would say texturally, this is probably the closest to the SkinCeuticals, which is um, a little more hydrating, probably a little heavier. I love that this comes in a 20 ml size as opposed to the regular 30 ml due to the oxidative nature of L-ascorbic acid. You know, I always finish this before it's really oxidized too much. 10% azelaic acid, another powerhouse ingredient in a really elegant formulation. So azelaic acid really was just obtainable through prescription. It was prescribed to treat rosacea. Um, it is a multitasking ingredient that's been backed by decades of research. This doesn't just treat the redness that's associated with inflammation, but over time this has the ability to dial down your skin sensitivity so that it becomes stronger, more tolerant, and less reactive. Which is why if you have reactive sensitive skin but you want to use tretinoin, you want to use retinols, um, it's great to treat your skin and prep it with this first. Um, this formula is boosted with other soothing plant ingredients such as licorice extract. There's also a little bit of salicylic acid in it, which also has analgesic properties, so it helps with inflammation as well. For post-acne scarring, this is one of the best things you can use. If you're someone who does not tolerate L-ascorbic acid well, you could also use this for the brightening properties. Um, the texture of this is everything. It's like really smooth and silky. It's like a lightweight lotion. I would use this after my hydrators, and this is a potent products. So I would not use this if you are also just starting out using retinols or starting out using any other type of um, concentrated actives or acids. It's best to ease into the use of this just like you would retinols. You can mix it with your moisturizer at first, maybe use it once a week, twice a week, and work up to using it more often. It's great for treating acne, hormonal acne. Um, in fact, some people like to use this in place of benzoyl peroxide and spot treat um, where they are breaking out. So you can actually use this in place of it or you can use it to supplement it. Let's talk about the peptide booster. This is a new one for me, but so far I am loving this enough to be talking about 
about it here. There was a time when peptides were very difficult to formulate because the technology um, did not yet exist to get them um, where they need to go in our skin in order to perform really effectively. Um, that is not the case now. And I definitely can tell the difference when I use them. In fact, many believe that a good peptide serum can replace retinoids. This is great age defensive skincare. It's great skin healing, repairing, strengthening skincare. This contains eight of the most targeted peptides that address lines, fine lines, wrinkles, loss of elasticity, firmness, and dullness. So when you're seeing the signs of aging, that's when you would consider this. I personally love the texture of it. Again, it's got that viscosity, that real sort of a comforting spreadability to it. It's super hydrating and it sinks into your skin. I've talked a lot about the Moisture Renewal Oil Booster. This is exceedingly comforting on the skin and again it has this really beautiful texture and I think it comes from the fact that it uses a base of jojoba oil. So it's really not that sort of very greasy texture. There are no fragrant oils in here but there's also ceramides and cholesterol as well. So I really feel like it's great for when your skin is just going through some sensitivity. You want some comfort. I really love their Omega Plus Complex Moisturizer. This has such a unique sort of whipped texture. There are no silicones in here, um, but it is moisturizing, but at the same time, it leaves a kind of velvet matte finish. This is so nourishing to the skin. It's got all the superfood omegas. It's also got the ceramides, cholesterol, the fatty acids. Um, but also I saw with my own eyes how one of my girlfriends who had an eczema flare-up on her hand, she applied this and it actually calmed it down so much just even within the next few hours. Resists all-in-one barrier repair moisturizer. It's just a hard working age defensive moisturizer. This also has just the silkiest lightweight texture. I just love the way it feels on my skin. Um, if for anyone who has a drier skin or just wants a heavier cream, um, the alternative would be the Intense Repair Cream. It's like the heavier version of this. This has the holy trinity of antioxidant vitamins. It's got vitamin A, C, and E. So it says it has retinol in here, but it's 0.01%, which is enough to add antioxidant value but it's not enough to have those transformative age reversal effects the way a more concentrated retinol would. So you're not going to have retinizing, you're not going to have the side effects. Um, this is actually a very gentle barrier repair, barrier strengthening moisturizer. It's got the powerful antioxidant plant extracts as well. It's just a hard working, protective, repairing, um, beautiful moisturizer. So Paula's sunscreens are a hybrid between sunscreens and moisturizer. The one that I've been reaching for the most recently is the Resist Youth Extending Daily Hydrating Fluid. This is a broad spectrum SPF of 50. This uses mostly chemical UV filters, although it also has titanium dioxide, um, but this truly is one of the most wearable sunscreens. It's super lightweight. It gets rid of any kind of shine. It even sort of blurs the pores a bit, kind of just makes your skin look good and also it doesn't pill. If you're putting makeup on over this, this will not pill, which is a huge plus. I love a milky, watery, thin, hydrating sunscreen texture. Really elegant. I can apply a lot of this without feeling like I've got a lot on my skin. Additionally, it's just so full of beautiful antioxidant ingredients, which is just a big bonus to have in your sunscreens. They're all mineral sunscreen, which I really like, is their Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is an SPF of 30, it uses zinc oxide. This has a tint to it, and when I first started applying on my skin, I was like, okay, this pinkish gray tinge is just not gonna work, but yet somehow it did work on my skin. It actually blended out. But not only that, it kind of made the texture of my skin look better. It sort of blurred out the pores, any kind of imperfections, kind of made everything look a little more smooth and blurry. I like that I don't need any other complexion products when I use this. One little discovery that blew me away is their lip screen. This lip screen is an SPF of 50, and this is legitimately a really good lip balm. This doesn't contain any petroleum, 
sodium, um, mineral oils, Vaseline or anything like that. It's just all natural butters and waxes and it just really moisturizes your lips. It has staying power. Huge plus, I don't feel like it has a weird taste considering that it's got all these, um, you know, chemical sunscreen filters in it. There's no weird taste. We have to talk about the retinols. Um, in Paul's Choice, they seem to jump at this point from 0.1% to 1% with nothing really in between um, for the time being. Their clinical 1% retinol treatment is their second best seller after the 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. I know just from comments that a lot of you are actually using this. I have not used this yet because I'm not at that point yet where I think my skin can handle um, a 1% retinol. 1% is no joke. It is pretty powerful. Um, this is definitely for the more advanced signs of aging, you know, hyperpigmentation or deep lines, um, firmness issues. I have tried the retinol booster though. I've never tried it straight up because I can imagine it would, you know, be intense, but I have I've actually used it to buffer with moisturizer. That really does help with the retinizing. I feel like that is a good way to sort of build up to um, a 1% strength. I also feel the retinol booster is better for anyone who might be using retinol for acne or if you just are acne prone. The texture is very liquid and light. It doesn't have the emollients, um, which would probably make it more suitable. So this formulation is a bit more complex than for the clinical 1% to achieve that fluid, watery, light texture. There's also additional anti-irritants and technology to enable a stable and soothing formula, hence the price difference. I love the Skin Revealing Body Lotion. This uses a 10% AHA. This is 10% glycolic acid. The texture of this is such a winner. It is so silky, it's so lightweight. It sinks into your skin almost immediately. I feel like whatever issues I've had, this has dealt with it, whether it's dry flaky skin, whether it's KP, redness scarring, the discoloration. I would say with any kind of KP, you know, those um, hard white bumps that show up commonly in the back of your arms, it would take about a month for you to see results when you're using these things. Take a long time to go away. In fact, it's a great prep step before self-tanning as well. Um, it's actually perfect for that. It makes sure that everything is just really smooth and soft. To me, this is more of a treatment than it is like moisturizing for dry skin, but over time, what a difference it makes weightless body treatment with 2% BHA. This is a super lightweight, very hydrating body lotion, but it also has 2% BHA. So if you are someone who has acne on your body or you're acne prone on your body, but you want some, you know, you want to use moisturizer as well, and it will treat it simultaneously without possibly making things worse. If you're prone at all to KP, this will really help prevent it as well. It's just really a beautiful, beautiful, lightweight body moisturizer. If you want a fast acting body treatment that is not a moisturizer that you can just conveniently spray on your skin, clear acne body spray with 2% salicylic acid. There is no alcohol in here that to dry out your skin. There are no other irritants in here on um, this formula. It's all hydrators and skin soothers. We have to talk about the Skin Smoothing Body Retinol Treatment. This uses 0.1% retinol. It's actually more moisturizing than the other two active body treatments. Um, and it's just great for putting on your neck. I can't put regular retinols um, on my neck because it's just so sensitive. You can put it on your neck. You can put it on the back of your hands. Um, any area in your skin that tends to have fine lines or maybe even a little bit of crepiness, the decolletage, it's like really important for this area. But yeah, I mean, it's just this beautiful moisturizing formula that leaves your skin, actually leaves a, a nice glossy sheen on your skin. It's got vitamins A, C, and E in it. I mean, it's like a treatment for your face, but for your body, which I can really appreciate. Uh, with the AHA, I feel like this is really helping in diminishing like the uneven skin tone, like around my legs. And yeah, as with all of these um, in the summertime, do make sure that you are using sunscreen. So that's it. Those are my favorite Paula's Choice picks of what I have tried. I would love to know what your favorites are. Um, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.